um, and social worksheet. Who are you? Is character reflection. Who are you as a person? What are your traits? What are your personalities? This type of thing. Personal motivation as well. What do you? What motivates you? What are you passionate about? Are you angry about injustice? Maybe yes. corruption? Maybe crime? These type of things. These can motivate you. These are also things that you should be thinking about. Yes. And who are you to those around you? We spoke about this a lot yesterday. How do your friends see you? How do your teachers see you? This is really, really key. Uh -huh. And who would you like to be? So those same friends, to your family, and we spoke about to, to society as well. So yeah, these are the really key takeaways. We don't really have to say much, it's pretty simple. You guys are all very clever. Be an individual, um, that's quite important. A lot of people think that they need to try and be the nerdiest person in the world, or to try and like pretend that they're somebody that they're not when they're applying to universities. Be yourselves, be honest about what you're interested in, and do that privately as well. What we need to be doing is when we're going home, we're actually looking up our interests. Not necessarily what your parents think should be your interests, or what you maybe or even your teachers because sometimes you know obviously you're not your great teachers but sometimes teachers are wrong so you shouldn't be trying to be what they think you are you should be trying to be yourself and you should be researching things that interest you you should be looking at careers that genuinely interest you this is really important be of our time that's another thing that's important remember um, we had the the pictures of harriet tubman and earth and different past leaders now what was the point of me showing you those pictures anyone please Fantastic, anyone else? Yeah, everyone's happy with that? Precisely, they did what their time needed them to do. So article, chopping off you know, heads of, 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 of you know, Christians and whoever to, set, to, to create the, the, the empire. Harriet Tubman, she used to carry um, a gun so that if, slave, if, if slaves who didn't want to escape, you know, if they wanted to stay, she'd just shoot them. Obviously, this is crazy now. You can't just kind of force people to do things and, and, and shoot them if they don't do it. But at the time, it was really important. Now, at the time that we're in, especially for a country like Azerbaijan that's changing, changing in its economy, changing in how it's structured, creating new industries, you guys have to think, how can I be useful in this economy? You know, back in the day, maybe Azerbaijan was quite dependent on exports, quite dependent on oil. Now you have different structures, different companies, different opportunities for you to be able to do things. And you have to be thinking, how can we be of our time? And then the final things work together. What was important about working together? Can anyone remember? Please? So your partner will be able uh, to show you the way, so and um, he will find the mistakes of you. Fantastic, that's really important. So we need to be, especially in classes, critiquing one another. So you guys are good friends, I'm, I'm guessing, because you're all interested in the environment and the same type of thing. So when one of your friends has a good idea or maybe a bad idea, you need to be saying to her, hey, I read something, this doesn't make sense. This law doesn't make sense. Because the worst thing would be is to not discuss something and then it comes to a university interview and that same thing is discussed. And you're like, oh, we could have done this with my friends, you know? Fantastic. Okay, so the homework. Did everybody do it? Everyone had a thought, fantastic. Look to your neighbour to the right or to the left of you, please. Let them know, what was, your, what was the cool person? Does everyone want neighbour? That's okay, you can do a three. Uh, you guys can do a two, I'll just stop with you. And uh, she created chirped pulse amplification and that method allows us today to do laser eye surgery. Wow. And in general, she's just... Very, she's a laser jock. So. Oh, the teacher can come to the class and learn something as well. Fantastic. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so I want to talk about Tim Burton. Mm -hmm. uh, he like makes movie and uh, kind of cartoons. He's my favorite uh, star director. director. Yeah, director. Uh, his movies are actually in black like colors, mm -hmm. uh, black aesthetic, mm -hmm. and I like it very much. His actually wife, but they're the worst, is Helena Bonham bon Carter. Actually, she really, like, uh, mm, uh, um, no, no, a lot, a lot, a lot. she is, no? in his movies Yes. Yeah, in his movies a lot, yes. yeah, of course. But actually, they don't watch now. Fantastic, thank you very much, please. Um, Kanye West. <laughs> to me personally because I think he he has uh, he works Pay attention everybody. He he's okay, so he's like one person but he has a lot of like 
meanings in his life. So he's a designer, a mm-hmm. businessman, a rapper, mm-hmm. and has a beautiful family, I believe. Um, he also has three kids, and he uh, always, I think it's very cool how he supports his president, uh, but everyone is like against it, but he's still like for it. Okay, so you like the fact that he makes a stand? Yes, okay. I think it's really cool. Okay, fair. So, hey. yesterday I told that I want to be a dentist surgeon, yeah. so I want to speak about one dentist surgeon from the Azerbaijan. It was, uh-huh. Uh, name is actually Agi Hussainov. So he was the first to make implants in the teas, teas implants in Azerbaijan. Okay. So as I think it's so interesting to me. For me, it's like a, uh, we are going to future, so we need to improve mm-hmm. our knowledge. Mm-hmm. And I think that I will sign his work and. Uh, actually open my clinic and then make it yeah. Fantastic. Well done, well done. Thank you everybody. <laughs> everybody, everybody pay attention. So I had to ask like a bunch of my friends yesterday um, based on the types of careers that I thought you guys might be interested in. I asked them to, you know, talk to me a little bit, tell me about things that they're doing and what I'm basically going to do is we're going to look at their lives and what they've done and what they do for a living and we're going to try and understand how did they get to that point what decisions did they make and yeah so basically these are people that I know and I think they're cool and um yeah let's look at them so this is my friend Mike he's an author and a venture capitalist does anyone know what a venture capitalist is? anyone? Perfect, fantastic, yeah. So basically, a venture capitalist is somebody, he doesn't necessarily run businesses, but he finds them specifically at a really early stage, and he says, hey, we'll give you some money, these are a good idea. He maybe helps them, gives some advice. It's like startups, yes. Fantastic, exactly. So, he's an award-winning author, a chartered accountant, an Oxford graduate, a student mentor, and a venture capitalist. So, this is quite a lot, and the reason that I chose him, actually, was because, I can't find you now, where are you, where are you, where are you? Where's my friend who wants to be a writer? There you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, um, you mentioned that you wanted to be a writer, but you're also interested in something else. And I remember that my friend Mike, he has written three or four books. He's written three or four books. Um, one, How to Get a First University, Student Procrastination, How to like, you know, Get Through Your Days, and then Graduate Entrepreneurship, How to Basically Start a Business Straight After You've Graduated Uni. Now he's done this whilst he's running a job and whilst he's doing his venture capital. So I think it would be good to hear from Mike to know, you know. All right, so unfortunately the video is not playing right now. I think there's a bunch of other videos that we'll get to, so we'll maybe skip this one. But essentially, Mike, what, what Mike says is that you have to, in order to balance different things, you have to be quite systematic. Now, what he does as, a, as an approach is, obviously he's written these, like, these books, so he usually gets deadlines. So he'll have a publisher and they'll say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he'll have a publisher and they'll say, you know, what do you want to write about? What's the idea? He'll pitch them the idea and then he'll schedule everything so that when he comes, when he comes to it, he knows this is what I'm doing on time. Do you guys all keep a diary like, uh, for, your, for your homework assignments? Yeah. Do you have to keep a diary? No. No. no? Um, so how will you remember to like you know when to hand in your work? You had it in the copy book, okay. And then how will you remember if you want to maybe read an extra book? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it doesn't sound like anyone's really um, writing down necessarily and taking charge of their thing. I think it's very sensible to have something like a diary. Have something where you can write in. What are your longer term goals? Because yesterday we had a lot of discussions about things that people want to do. People want to work harder, people want to write books, people want to start blogs, people want to do all kinds of things. But if we don't necessarily focus, write these things down, share them with your friends and say, hey, Remind me to do this if I maybe forget. Or in three weeks time, I'm going to aim to do this. Now, why might you tell your friend that you're going to aim to do something? Anyone? So they can help you out, yeah? Anyone else? Remind you. Remind you, yeah? Anyone else? You see them often. Say again? You see them often. You see them often, of course. Of course. And what it really does is it creates accountability. If you go to your teacher and you tell him, in two weeks time, I'm going to have read this book. Are you going to sleep every single evening and not read any books? Probably not, because you, you said you're going to read the book, you don't want to look silly. And it's this type of thing that's really important. 
developer as well. So a couple of you guys mentioned that you're into development, so I wanted to talk to him about you know what he does, and he's just going to talk to you for about a minute about what it is that he does. And he's weirdly really really rich, even though like he we, we often joke like he's, he looks a little bit homeless sometimes, but he's got a lot of different jobs and you know he does a great job. So let's go. Yes, so um, my name's Will. I've been working in cybersecurity for two years. Um, one of the best points about working in cybersecurity is that you get to have fun all day. Like you get all of the toys to play with. You get high-end servers to mess around with when you get a chance. Uh, you build a whole network lab, and you basically get to break other people's computers for money. I studied software engineering at Cardiff Met. Uh, if you are in uni right now or you're in school, Go online and like go find yourself some competitions to get involved in because competitions are kind of how you hone your skills. You can spend three years in university and you will be completely outclassed by someone who's done like two or three competitions in the same field. It's just you learn so much when you're put in that high pressure environment. Um, to get to my position, that was basically it. Um, I got hired off the strength of the things that I'd done, the competitions that I'd been to, um, and the things that I could prove because of that as well. Because a lot of the time competitions put in some hard real world examples to get over. Um, yeah, that's about it for me. Fantastic, thanks to Will. Okay, so I'm gonna break down what it is that Will actually does. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna play this slide. Okay, so Will Simmons, he's a systems admin, he's a hacker, which is how I knew him um, when I was at school, he used to like hack into things, one time he broke our school's fire alarm, this was obviously stupid, but, um, so he set off all of the sprinklers by hacking our systems, so he was really good at hacking from early, and um, instead of going to jail, he actually turned his life around, and um, he became a police security consultant, so now, what he does, um, if you can imagine, he works within, he works for myself, so he does like systems and security, so if anybody tries to hack into our websites, he sorts it out, and essentially he's a positive hacker for the police, and what he does is he tries to track down uh, mainly paedophiles, um, and mainly like sex criminals, because a lot of the time, they hide behind sophisticated um, infrastructures. So what he does is he's clever enough to go into the police, break it down, work with them to make sure that, you know, they're not able to get away and, and hide their crimes. So this is quite important. And yeah, the key lessons from Will, do three things. So what he spoke about all through his, um, all through his uh, high school career, he was always going to these hackathons. Now a lot of them are free. Um, I think you have some that are starting now in Azerbaijan. There's a, you have like a Ferrari like uh, workshop in, 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 in the center of Azerbaijan. And um, opposite that, there's like a, 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 shared, a shared office space. And they're doing some hackathons and things like that. Now you have to be, I think, 16 to go, but that's something that's for you to bear in mind. Um, so free competitions, puzzles, all of these type of things, these allow you to kind of access, and more importantly, prove what you're interested in. Because what do you think everybody does when they go to university interviews? Everybody says, I'm passionate about this, I'm interested about this, I like doing this. Um. And where's the evidence? What have you done? What have you got involved with? What clubs, what societies, what have you done? This is really important. Okay, so. So yeah, the next person, this is a guy called Abbas Kazmi. He's an energy crypto investor. Um, this is really important as well. Um, we spoke yesterday, a lot of people are interested in the environment. He essentially invests in um, sustainable technologies. He works within um, mainly energy. So he works to find like new, more sustainable energy solutions. Now this guy's really impressive. He was Oxford, um, he went to Oxford University. He studied history and just being cropped out there is law as well. Um, he went, he's the youngest person to have a 100 million pound VC startup, which means like, that doesn't mean he has 100 million pounds, that means that he has investment from enough people to essentially invest that into other companies, other infrastructures, investment structures. Um, he's focused on the energy and the environment, and he founded um, Oxford University Business Guild Club as well, which is important. So I'm just going to show you a quick video. Yeah, so this is him. You know what? We don't really got too much time. I'm going to skip his video. But essentially what he says is to get into as much things as possible, be really creative, be original, and what he also says is try and do as many societies and clubs as you try, especially at university, especially in school. You know, try and play a sport. If you don't like it, play another one. Try and go to a society again. If you don't like it, go to another one. Work hard to find out what it is that you're interested in.
Okay, really similar thing. So Tim Army, who is an advertising entrepreneur, he went to Warwick University. He actually started off studying philosophy, politics, and economics, and he changed after one year to computer science. What does this tell you about him? Anyone, 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 please. Um, he had one specific career goal, perhaps, and he experimented with it to uh, find out whether he really likes it and whether it's really the correct thing for him. Mm -hmm. Is this a good thing to change your university course after yes, years? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not often, but uh, like, it's better to change it in university than later in life. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. Is this what everyone thinks? Yes. Yeah. Great, but what could he do instead? Like what could he have done? He could have looked at uh, the PPE courses when he was younger and see what they did. Exactly. He could have known before what it was, what he liked and what he disliked. He really just picked a course because his family told him, hey, PP is a really good course, you should go and study this. And he was good at it for, he was good at it for the subject. He thought that he'd like it in university. He hated it. Every single day he would text me, he'd be like, you know, I, I have so many problems, this is so boring, this isn't relevant to what I'm doing, I don't care about it. Now, what you guys are in a good position to do, simply if you're listening today, look up your courses and ask people who've done them. Ask people who've done them, what do you do now? What are the things that you have to do within university? Is this boring? Is it fun? Will it suit me? That's really important. That's what you essentially need to be doing. So yeah, um, one of the things that he did really well after he had his, his struggles in first year with PPE, he then decided to become like a startup founder as well whilst he was in school. And yeah, he did a good job there. And this is something in the Daily Mail uh, about what he did. So essentially what he does is he helps brands. He works with McDonald's and GoPro and different people. He finds people on Snapchat, influencers, and he makes content with them for those brands. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. So we're just going to have a quick look at what he has to say in terms of advice. Oh, not that one. Hello, my name is Timothy Army, and I am the CEO of Fanbytes. We are a video advertising company which helps brands to distribute social videos. What would you do differently? Um, I would say kind of in tandem with um, what I've said. I don't know why it's not projecting that. I really can't use Windows. Hold on. Okay, you know what, guys? Gonna have to just listen to it because we really don't have time. I said, um, what I would listen do differently um, if I if I had the chance to, what I would do differently is I would have basically um, practiced this idea of just like learning the process and just replicating what other people have done to get to where they are. I'd have practiced that way earlier. I don't think that. I think. When I was younger, I had a bit of ego, and um, I, and and I didn't try and like just focus on what other people were doing and just replicating it. It sounded too good to be true, um, and I'm pretty sure, like as I'm telling you this, it, it also sounds too good to be true. Like what? Like just replicate what this guy does, and and you get the results. And yeah, like that's that's pretty much it. Um, so that to me was quite important as well. Um, this idea of just replicating what other people have done and then just getting the outcome. Okay, so well, what did everybody hear from that? Anyone? Uh, no, um, no, please. You go first, you can go after. Go ahead. Uh, so he said that uh, he was But it's not necessarily just replicating others precisely and like what they've done. It's really understanding and learning their process. 
how do they approach things? How do they think about problems and ideas? Now, obviously this guy, like, um, he was literally at university in the same year as me, and he's already like has a company, they've made two million pounds, this is like quite a big deal. And literally all he's done is look around at people who he thinks is, is intelligent, people who he thinks is smart, and he's asked them, what did you do? What ideas did you plan? Now there's another video that like, obviously technology hates me this morning, so I'm not gonna, <laughs> not gonna struggle and show you that one. But the other video that, he's gonna, that he was gonna talk to you about, essentially says what you need to do is find a marketable skill. That's what you need to double down on. Everybody's nice, especially in interviews. Everybody's nice, everybody's friendly, everybody has good grades when you're applying to the universities. What can you do that other people can't do? Now, a lot of the times, especially people from foreign economies, they don't often realise that there's a lot of benefit in coming from somewhere like Azerbaijan and going to somewhere like England. Because every university wants to say that they're diverse. Every university wants to say, hey, we've got this society, we've got an Azri society, we've got a Caribbean society, we've got different things. Now, if you're coming to a university from a different perspective, offer that perspective. What can you tell an interviewer at a university that somebody else can't? Those are skills that you have, that is experience, that's knowledge that you have. And again, it, it relates a lot to the individuality that we were talking about yesterday, and it also relates to what we need to be doing and the skills that we need to be having in the future. So yeah, copy processes, main takeaway. Approach things objectively as well. Like, don't do things because, oh, it's emotional, or because you, know, you think that it's fun, or because you think this is boring. Really sit down and think, look, this is what I want to do with my life. I want to become an engineer. If you want to become an engineer, even if maths maybe is difficult for you, you have to keep going with the maths problems, otherwise you'll never get to that goal. You need to be objective in, in how you're doing things. Don't necessarily be driven by your emotions, think about things carefully. Learn aggressively and deliberately. A lot of the time, there's so much news going on, it seems like everybody's really aware of news, especially like, I saw some reactions to Kanye West, Donald Trump, these type of things. That's fantastic, but don't be on the defense. With, with knowledge. What do you think I mean if I say don't be on the defense? Anyone, please. Like, so, do more actions, like do it yourself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yourself. Please. Instead of trying to defend your opinions, mm -hmm. try to prove them. Fantastic, that's really important. So, don't play on the defense. Make sure that you're not always necessarily ingesting knowledge and being shouted at in debates and discussions. Don't always be spoken. Sometimes, obviously it's important to listen and speak in that kind of ratio. You've got two ears and one mouth. But what's important as well is that you are proactive, that you're going and you're finding new things, that you're learning aggressively. Well, to say something is learning aggressively, what do, what do you think that means, learning aggressively? Like, are you punching your books, anyone? No, like, what, do you, what, what does that mean? Maybe it's when you don't like understand the things you learn, uh -huh. but you just like learn by heart. Uh huh. So yeah, you carry on, you keep fighting through to learn things. Yeah. What else do you think it might mean? Learn more to try more. Mm -hmm. If you're pushing a boundary, if you're inventing things, what are you, what are you necessarily doing? Uh, maybe you do some additional work. Uh huh. You're doing like extra things, working things hard. That teacher said, but like something like extra work, fantastic, please. And I uh, think you have to train yourself mm -hmm. mentally. Really important. Okay, so learning aggressively and learning deliberately. A lot of the time, when you're innovating, when you're looking to create things which you guys will in the future, what you need to be doing is disproving people. Because somebody somewhere, especially in business, business case scenarios, somebody somewhere is making money doing this business. That's working well. Now, if you want to go and do a similar business, this is your skill set, what do you need to prove to investors? You need to show them that your idea is better. It's, it's, it's better. In order to do that, you have to learn aggressively. You have to be looking at what's wrong with the world. How can I fight against it? What's wrong with this person's business plan or this person's company or how this thing runs or how the government does something and fight against it? That's really important. Don't play on the defense. Don't be told and directed and given all of your opinions from your teachers or from your parents or whatever. You need to be thinking carefully. You need to be playing offensively. View learning as a marketplace. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think it's very capitalist. Um, but he basically thinks that you should be looking at what are the skills that are needed in society? What are the good things that are happening? And how can I basically make as much money? And how can I be as impactful as possible? So what do I need to go and learn? And that's how he decided to change from philosophy to computer science. Because he realized, hey, I can make more money. I can do more things with this. OK, cool. Um, this is just a little principle of the day. Prioritise by weighing the value of additional information against the cost of not deciding. That's from Ray Dalio. That's quite difficult. Does anybody, can anybody explain to me what this quote means? Think about it for a, for a moment. Can anyone explain to me what this quote means? 
Can anybody explain to me or rephrase what this principle, what this quote means? Give the people a second. Um, I'll come to you and then... You know, okay. and then you. Please. So the expression says that uh, additional information will, be, will always be useful for you. Uh -huh. In any case, as it will add you more experience, it will add you more knowledge for you. Uh huh. Good. That's a good start. Yeah. Additional information is useful. Please. Okay. Yeah. Can you can you add more to that? Uh, what do you think? Uh, no, the same thing. You think the same thing? Please. Maybe that's when uh, you hire people, like they ask you why, uh, why you, like why do we have to hire you? Uh huh. Uh, and by knowing that information, we can just say I know this this information. Uh -huh. That's why you have to hire. These are good. These are good good attempts. Um, we had one more hand there. Please. Uh -huh. Okay, fantastic. We, we, we're almost there. So, essentially, prioritize. What that means is that that's when you're choosing what you should do in order of importance. Yeah, by weighing the value of additional information against the cost of not deciding. Now, this is really important to young people. What it's basically saying is, when you're looking to research something, weigh the weigh the the benefits of that additional information against the cost of not deciding to research. So for example, in Tim's situation, he said, I'm not gonna bother researching what type of university um, course I wanna do. I'm just gonna pick a course based on what my parents are saying or what I'm good at. Now, what was the cost of that decision? He had to change his whole course, pay an extra 9,000 pounds, his parents had to pay this, he had to, do, he had to reapply to university again and do a different course because he failed to take in the information. Now what you people need to be doing as young people is deciding, hey, if I read this book or if I go and do this research, how much more benefit am I, being, am I getting from that as against not doing it? Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. So you need to be working smart, that's the thing, because you can't read every book in the world. You can't research every course in the world. You need to be looking and saying, hmm, is there going to be much benefit to this new information and what do you think they should do in their situation? How would how would he practice more to find out what he might like? Maybe uh, search uh, like searching uh, or reading some more books. Uh -huh. uh, really good. That's no, that's good. That's really really good. Well done. Um, I see what I have. I'll let you go. So our group chose the uh, Abbas uh -huh. because he is a in a particular investor. So as I say, uh, he gave money for the environment. Guys, 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 please, please listen. Pay attention. So uh, he started university at 18, so I think it's good. good. Uh, so he gave money for environment, yes? yes. So he uh, not only say, uh, earn money, but uh -huh. receive money, but also help to our planet. Exactly. So I think Thank that's you. a good to help our environment and for Fantastic. Well done. Thank you very much. Can I have one of you guys from this group, please? Yeah. Well, they said our uh, mice took the fuller. Uh -huh. That's, that's great. Yeah. Um, oh, no, that's fine. Because he, I, we just think he's a really like, intelligent, I guess, because yeah, he plays three like, books yeah. and stuff. So I really like motivation. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, so Mike, he was 21 and he just graduated from accounting. And he was writing his first book, which was about how to study and how to stop procrastinating. What do you think he should do? What do you think he should um, do as a task? What steps should he take? Oh, we're talking about mine. Talking about mine. Um, Please. Maybe he could uh, ask other writers, like, uh, uh, how could he improve his book or Fantastic. add something? Fantastic. That's exactly what you want to do, guys. That's exactly what you want to do. Please. Or uh, he must read some books to have experience. Fantastic. So read some books, ask some people who are working in the field, understand things. Maybe you can even go back and ask your lecturers or your teachers the same thing. Okay, so boring stuff. Um, when you're applying for situations, when you're looking to, to ask people questions, guys, make sure you're proofreading your emails. If you're ever asking somebody for a favour, you need to just look like you care about what you're asking them. This is really important. 
Don't lie on applications. So when you're ever applying for opportunities, make sure that you're telling the truth. Um, it says that they can prove. So obviously, like if you say you did something in your school, no one's gonna, you know, um, find out that you've told this lie. But generally speaking, don't lie on your applications in, in order to do things and, and to get into situations. And from 16 plus, I don't know how um, how old all of you guys are, but from 16, you really need to be having a CV. Now, at that age, what your CV would be showing is any experiences, any jobs, any maybe part-time things that you've done. Essentially, you need to be thinking, how do I look to employers? How do I look to different people? Uh -huh. So approaching jobs, interviews, and experiences. Be humble and be willing to learn. That's one of the first things that they look for. This is why, especially at good universities, this is why they're interviewing you. Because they're looking to see, not somebody who thinks, oh, I'm the best person in the world at this course, or I'm the best mathematician, but somebody who thinks, you know, I've got a lot to learn, I'm conscious, I understand how to learn, and I'm doing this. Find things that will stretch you. This is really important as well. What you need to be doing, especially, and this is from now as well, don't just do things that you find easy. Do some things that you find hard. You know, if maybe you're not so good at robotics, you're not so good at science, maybe join a science class and you can say, look, this is something that I've worked on, this is something I've developed. When you get to university, one of the key questions that they always ask you, especially American universities is, tell us about a time that you struggled with something. And what they want to see is an example of you overcoming that struggle. They want to see you putting things into practice and becoming better. Be polite and enthusiastic, view yourself as an asset and be helpful. This is really important because essentially what we should always be doing is adding value. Even you guys, you're very intelligent, you know a lot about stuff. I learned something today about um, what the, I can't even remember, what the, what the Nobel Prize winner won for, for physics this year. Now, what that means is that anybody, doesn't matter what age, can bring something to the table. Now, if you're going to your headmaster and you're saying, hey, I want to do one of the jobs or I want to be um, a, a monitor, I want to be something, you're being helpful. You need to think of every job, every opportunity, every volunteering, every apprenticeship that you can do that you're an asset that you have skills to give, that you can be useful. This is really important. Any questions, any interview things you need to be answering openly and ideally. Okay, so I think, have we run out of time? Um, I am actually not sure. Okay, so we're gonna just do one last task if we've not run out of time. Essentially what we're gonna do is, we're gonna split the room in half. So you guys literally, that's, that's basically half, right? <laughs> Go down this way. You guys are on one side and you guys are on another side. What we're basically going to do is we're going to, I'm going to put up a bunch of things that you can do and apply for that would be good. On this side of the room, you're going to think about what would you like these candidates for that job to do. So you're essentially interviewers. And on this side of the room, you're candidates and you're thinking what would make you good for this position. Now, these are the positions that I thought of. School newspaper editors. <laughs> um. Office admin. Assistant or helper, so somebody who maybe goes into an office, prints things out. These are really good. It means that you can look around, understand and learn stuff. Sports team secretary, do you, do you know what this is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Charity fundraiser. This is, a really, this is, I think, my favourite one to see for young people because it doesn't matter if you're 13. If you go to a charity and you say to them, hey, I want to help you doing what you're doing, they're not going to say no. It's very unlikely that they're going to say there's nothing that you can do to help us. Now that's definitely something that you guys can be interested in. So as I said, we're going to split the room just down here. This side of the room, you're going to just think about, I'm going to, so I'm going to come down and I'm going to tell you which one you're going to be. But you guys are going to think about what it is, what characteristics would you want to see in somebody who's applying for these positions. And this side of the room, pick any one of these jobs and think about how would you become a good candidate for these, please. Alright, I'm going to give you a Okay, so you four, think about a school newspaper. What kind of um, things do you need to be good at? You need to be good at reading and writing, you need to be fantastic. Okay, everybody, 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 everybody. Okay, so we're going to take this group by group. What I'm going to do firstly is we're going to go along this road. We're going to talk to the guys about what it is that they expect to see from an office administrator. Sorry, from a school newspaper editor, firstly. And then... Because no. some of us couldn't tell, like, I'm like this, like this, like this, only because... No, 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 because I'll... Give me a chance. <laughs> so, essentially, what will happen is they're going to tell you what they expect to see, and then you're going to answer and say, oh, these are the characteristics that I chose, or these are the, this is the jobs that I did. You understand? Okay, fantastic. So, you guys first. You chose school newspaper editor? Yeah. 
Yeah. What type of things would you expect to see from a school newspaper editor? I uh, expect to see um, he must be intelligent, he must be creative, uh, and um, oh. he or she, he or she, he or she. It's an equal, equal right. Uh, and, um, focus, guys, focus. Uh, and he must be, um, he must uh, see mistakes. So you said organized? He, no, he must be is, uh, organized, intelligent, creative, and must see mistakes. Okay, fantastic. Now on this side of the room, we need to be organized, able to see mistakes, um, a couple of other things as well. Does anybody choose those characteristics? Who wanted to be a school newspaper editor? <laughs> Anyone? No one? Who's the school newspaper editor? Oh, is it you? Oh, I see. Okay, so then you yourself. What what school newspaper uh, qualities did you have when you were asking to be in the school newspaper editor? And what makes your what makes you good at your job? Guys, 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 please focus in, focus in. We're gonna learn what makes you a good school newspaper editor, please. I also have <laughs> Please. Not to boast, but I think organization is very important. And also you need to be good at motivating people, giving them speeches, and you have to be a little authoritative. Authoritative? In terms of you have to make Does everyone know what that word means? Authoritative? It means able to take control, it means able to like um, set the rules. Yeah, like you need to make sure they listen to you, and they respect you, but they don't fear you. Okay, fantastic. So, anybody else now? Okay. What do you need to do to be a good school newspaper editor? Anyone else? I think you were interested in doing this. No, but still. <laughs> um, I think your grammar should be like really fantastic. Good. Oh no, you should be really creative. Uh -huh. That's fine. That's fantastic. Okay, we're gonna we're running a little bit late on time, so we're just gonna skip to the next person okay. and talk after, yeah. Okay, so office admin assistant. That was you guys, right? So, uh, we have uh, that office uh, assistant must be uh, organized. Uh -huh. It means to be punctual. Uh -huh. uh, to be polite. Well done. That's fantastic. Organized, punctual, polite, and helpful. And yeah. So, and, and, so, he, and he needs to have some uh, plan. Mark fix something. Fantastic. He has to be. Oh, let this go. Let this go. Let this go. Please go. Ahead. Yes, you need to have some plan. Mark to work not so, such a hard. It's a hard work, uh, you need some Fantastic, really important. Guys, anybody, did anybody fit those characteristics? Somebody, so they're looking for somebody who has a good sense of humour, a good um, mannerism, somebody who's organised, somebody who's doing their job properly. Does, who fits those? Uh, Jamal. Jamal? Jamal. Fantastic, so maybe Jamal, you could be a, 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 an office assistant. An office assistant, you just improve your organisation. Fantastic, okay guys, so sports team secretary. Guys, this is me, last one, last one. What team is that you must be very organized, have good memory, functional, and have social practice. Okay. Uh, okay, fantastic. So, that was, sorry, that was the last one. So, the school secretary, school secretary, no, carry on. Please, uh, you say that again. Talent, uh, organized, have good memory, and must be very functional. Fantastic. Did anybody want to be a sports team secretary? You? And do, are you punctual? Do you have a good memory? Are you organized? Yes, I always come on time and whenever my like, parents are late to something, I always like, get so nervous to <laughs> come into a room like hardly. Okay, fantastic. That's really good. Just the last one, you guys at the back. You guys are doing charity organization, one of you please. What skills would you want to see? And it was a children's charity. Yeah. yeah? yeah. What skills would you want to see from a charity yeah. organization? Be kind and actually Fantastic, really well done. Now, does anybody want to be a charity assistant? You? Yes, because I like helping like, people that Fantastic. Both of you can go, you first. Yeah, sure, because you're helping people and it also encourages people to help other like, people. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, I would like to be the charity fundraiser if we had that job at this school mm -hmm. because. Uh, well, firstly, it helps you understand other people and it's like, uh, it, yeah, it helps you see their perspective and Fantastic. also as you, uh, like you can, uh, 
So uh, you can get, uh, so in our school charity fundraising would be something like bake sales uh -huh. now, so we can uh, have fun with other friends uh -huh. and we can help people at Fantastic. the same time. That's really great, really well done. Okay, so essentially everybody, these are four things that you can do by yourselves, already at your age, to make your university application stand out. Now, what you need to be understanding is, is in order to get these opportunities, you have to think carefully and persuade the teachers or the organizers of what you need to be doing as a character in order to be good at these roles. Does everyone understand why we did the exercise? Yes. yes. Makes sense? Yeah. Fantastic. Now, essentially that's everything done. What I'd like you to do as your quick homework for this evening is fill out the form about professionalism. I'm gonna check it tomorrow and I'd like everybody to have a couple of notes about a career they might like in the future and within their steps, I'd like you to pick something that you can do now, just like this, and think really carefully, how can you be good? So if you've already done the school newspaper editors, pick something else. If you've already maybe to be a sports secretary or something else, have a really good thing, and how can you do this in order to help with your future career? Make sense? Only from this. No, you can pick anything you like, anything relevant, but what I want you to have is something that you as young people can do now. Thank you very much for your attention, guys. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.